Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing maximum length of a pair chain. And this one's really simply straightforward. So essentially you have a bunch of pairs. They might be sorted, they might not be. And you want to return the longest possible chain you can have. So in this case, if you have this, you want to return one, two, and then you want to return three, four because this two and two intersect, so you can't have that. So you need a chain where the right of every single one and the left of the next one are not the same. And for the second example, if we sort this as well, it's one, two, four, five, seven, eight, so you would return this chain. So it's pretty much like a merge intervals problem where you can, actually it's pretty straightforward. So first you would sort the number just to make sure your stuff is in order. And then it's kind of straightforward. Like you have, right, you have sorted numbers. So first you would sort, then let's say you have this like one, two, and maybe you have two, three, and then three, four, and you have like six, eight, let's say, and then like eight, 10 or something. So it's a pretty straightforward algorithm. You're gonna have some result. And essentially you don't actually have to like get the merge interval. So all you have to do is just figure out how many conflicts there are. And then for every conflict, you just have to remove one of them, right? So like here, there's a conflict because these twos are the same. So you just have to figure out like, which one do I remove? And so you could do it a few ways. You could just make the result equal to the length of this whole thing, right? So we could just say like, let's make the result five. And then for every conflict, I'll just remove one from my number. So I will go through here and I'll be like, okay, it's my first number. Okay, that's good. Now for my second number, is there a conflict here? Well, yes, there is. So I need to remove one of these. And so which one would you want to remove? Well, you can actually just be greedy and you want to remove that one that minimizes conflicts, right? So we can remove one, two or two, three. What would maximize our chances to not have any conflicts in the future? Well, it's going to be, we're going to want to keep this one, right? because this ends with a two. So if we have something that ends with a two, we're gonna minimize our conflicts in the future. So we could just say like, okay, cool. Now that we have a conflict, let's just remove this one here. Okay, and let's just remove one from our result because we have a conflict. All right, so now we have this one, two, and this three, four. Is there a conflict? No, there's not. Okay, so let's not do that. Is there a conflict here? No, there's not. Okay, and is there a conflict here? Yes, there is. And which one am I gonna remove? So I'm gonna wanna remove once again, the one that has the bigger end because that one's gonna maximize my conflict. So I'm gonna remove this one here. And now my result is three. And that's pretty much honestly it for this problem. You literally just sort them. And then every time you have a conflict, you just figure out which one do I wanna keep, the left or the right. And you wanna keep the one with the smaller right index. And so the way we're actually gonna do this is we're not gonna do it this way. We are actually gonna make it even simpler. So let's just go through this one more time, but that's essentially what we're doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize actually our result to one, and then we are gonna have a current variable that's gonna be equal to the right value of the first thing we have. Or if you want, you could make your right value like negative infinity or something, that would also work. And then for every single value you put in, that would also work. But essentially we're gonna initialize our result to one saying like this is our current variable. And then we're just gonna go through the rest of the array. So we're gonna initialize it to here and then we're gonna go through the rest of this array and we're just gonna compare our current variable. And if there is a conflict, we're gonna we're gonna either keep our current variable or change it. And we're not gonna add the value yet. And if there isn't, we can just add the value and switch our current. So like in this case, this is our current. We are on this value here. Let's actually use different colors for that. So let's say we're on this value, our current's the blue and this is our loop. So here we would say like, okay, is there a conflict? Yes, there is. So now we can pick it, we can say, okay, do we want the current to be the two or the three? We want the smaller value. So we're gonna have the current be the two. And then because there was a conflict, we're not gonna add one to the result. So now we're gonna go to this number over here. I'm gonna say, okay, is there, a current, is there a conflict between this number and the current? No, there's not, right? So there's no conflict between these two values. Okay, well in that case, let me just write down the current. Let me add that to the results. So now this will be two. And let me just update my current. So the current now will be this one over here. Let me actually just put this in. Yeah, so the current will be this value here now, and then we're gonna move on in our loop. And so in our loop, we're gonna go to this value here and we're gonna say, is there a conflict? No, there's not. So let's update this to be a three. And we're gonna update our current now to be this value over here. So let's do that. So this, this, and now our current will be this value over here. It's this right one. Okay, is there a conflict now here where this is our value over here? 
And yes, there is. And so we're going to update our current to be the smaller one of these two values. Because all we need is the right value. We don't need the left value. We're just comparing the right value of whatever we're at to the left value of the next thing. So we're going to keep our current to be 8. And then because there was a conflict, we're not going to increase. So essentially, we have two cases, right? So we have two cases here. And let's write those down. So one, conflict, update cur to be smallest right variable of the two things. Or we have no conflict add one to result and cur is has to be the right variable of the of the array on the right, right? So for example, if you're comparing these two arrays and there is no conflict, you're saying, I want to keep this one. So now the thing you're going to be comparing is this variable here. So that's where the current has to be here. But if you're deleting one of them, then you can pick which one do I want to keep for your current. And that's pretty much it. So we just sort and we just compare our current just like a normal merge intervals. And then every interval we have to delete, we, you know, like I said, you can either make your result equal to the whole thing. And then for every interval you delete, you can subtract or you could add it in every time there is an interval you don't have to delete. Either one works. Okay, so now we have to code. So let's do that. So we're gonna set our result to one just because our current is gonna be this first value here. So we can do that. And let's actually get rid of this. So that's what we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna set our current equal. So there is there's guaranteed this array is at least length one. So this is gonna be um, pairs zero, one. We just need the right value. And now we could just say for first last in pairs everything from the first value onward. And now this is where we do our logic. So we have to say if cur, so we have to check for the conflict. If cur is greater than or equal to, this is our conflict first, that means we have a conflict. So we want the cur to be the minimum. If there's a conflict, remember we get to pick which one we keep. So we can just say, we can just keep the minimum last value. So we can say cur equals minimum of cur and last. And now we don't need to add another value, right? So it's literally that, just like if there's a conflict, oh, there is some spacing error here. And yeah, this is kind of like a niche solution. You can make it a little bit like more code and maybe a little bit un more understandable, but this does work. So essentially all you need is the right value. You don't need the left one because you're never using it for your, like let's say we have like one, two and three, four. We are comparing this to this to make sure there's a conflict. And then we're comparing this to this to see which one we keep, but we never need this value here. So that's why that curve can only be like this one and we don't need the rest of it. Okay, so essentially that's the case for that one. Otherwise we need to add one to our result because we're essentially putting our curve into that result array. So it's gonna be as plus equals one. And then finally, we need to uh, like update our cur. So that's going to be cur equals last now. And finally, we can return the result. And the reason, even though we have a value in cur at the end, we don't need to like add it at the end because we initialize this to one. So if you think about it, if you have something like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, what would happen is with like no conflict, let's say cur would be here, and then you would write this in then cur would be here, you would write this in, and then cur would be here, but because you wrote these in already, result is gonna be three. So even though you have a value in cur, it doesn't matter because you set it equal to one. You could set it equal to zero, and then you could have some like dummy variable that would also work. So we can actually try that after just making sure this works. It looks like we have something wrong here. So two expected three. Oh, we forgot the sort. So we could do pairs dot sort that's as well, right? So for all these merge intervals, always do a sort because they have to be in order for the intervals to make sense. Okay. So we can look at the efficiency and you can see it's reasonably efficient. And now let's try to actually make our change. So what if we make this zero, then we say cur equals, let's just make it like something that never has a conflict. Let's just say like negative infinity, right? So we can say negative infinity. Um, I believe, so let me think about this. Like, let's say we have like uh, this one, two, three, four, two, three, or not two, three, three, four. And then we have five, six. 
So what would happen here is if you make it like this whole pairs, let's just walk through it really quick. So, so you'd write this negative infinity once here, you'd write it here. Yeah, I think this would also work. And then you'd have a last value, but let's just double check. Okay, so it looks like it does. So either one, totally fine. And you can see it's reasonably efficient. Okay, so let's go through the time and space here. So for the time, essentially we are sorting, that's n log n already. And then we are just comparing like every interval to every other interval. So we're essentially doing like an n, uh, we're, we're walking through it one time, so that's gonna be like then. So the sort is gonna be the main thing here. And then for the space, it's pretty straightforward. We don't make anything else, right? We just make a result and a cur. Actually, no, our result is our, yeah, our, we don't count the result anyway, but our cur is essentially just an integer. So we don't need to care about that. So this is space of one. But yeah, so a pretty easy problem of the day, I think. Um, once you once you recognize, you can just do the merge intervals and be greedy. You don't need to do anything fancy. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.